Stand under here long enough, might just be able to catch a treat. <laughs> and in fact, he's probably starving. Why you should take the ducks from the park. My rule of thumb is if you can pick them up with your hands, they belong on your farm. Do you need another set of pans? Okay, everybody, this is downtown Waco. As you can see, people used to toss tortillas off that bridge over there, tortillin. All the freshmen come and they toss tortillas off that bridge. They try to land it on that little cement pier there. And a lot of people, because of that, drop off all of their unwanted male ducks in this area. As you can see, there's a male Chinese goose over there just kind of hanging out. Issue is they're doing construction. They've been doing construction for the last several months and nobody's feeding these animals, literally nobody. And they used to eat just tortillas, which isn't a good thing because tortillas aren't really good for their digestive system, especially if that's their only diet. Every one of these adorable little baby boys was at one point just a cute little pet. Look how close he's let me get to him. And in fact, he's probably starving. One goose I rescued over there that was uh, captured in some twine, that's on our YouTube channel. If you guys go back to the video of me catching the pigeons. Literally geese are just get dropped off here and then they get tangled in twine or something like that or they just die of starvation. The fact that this guy's letting me get so close to him is just absurd. But this is a Chinese goose. You can see how adorable he is. He's got a very little handsome face. Now he can eat the grass here, but that's really about it. I don't want to go ahead and try and grab him because I don't want him to get scared, but I will go back and get a cast net later on. This can be Morgan's boyfriend. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that that guy would eat out of my hands if I brought him some bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's the Alco building. This is a little concrete pillar that people would try and throw their tortillas at. And there's our little goose friend. He already swam out. I'm gonna try and get some bread and see if I can hand feed. My rule of thumb is if you can pick them up with your hands, they belong on your farm. This is the Alco building. This is my friend, Brian. He's here from out of town. As I say, everyone say hello, Brian. And tonight we're just gonna be catching. Okay, my phone died and I went back also for First, here's a little kitten. This is a little kitten that lives in our barn. Isn't that adorable? Put out a little bit of food and water for him a while ago, and now he just kind of sticks around. Look how precious he is. That's okay. He hides back in there. That's okay. I'm planning to clean all this stuff up very, very soon. We went and got acai bowls because we bougie like that. It was on Brian, not me. I'm not rich. Fed a little bit of the acai bowl to the goose that was there, and then I just kind of picked him up because he let me pick him up. This woman came by and she said, Hey, you're not supposed to do that. I simply said to her, well, for me to release this back into the water here is a crime. Because that's true. Like I said, all of those ducks are abandoned there. They don't belong there and nobody's feeding them, especially now that students aren't throwing tortillas off the bridge. Her and her friend said, oh, well, they don't look skinny. They don't look like they're malnourished. And I was like, how can you tell if a goose is malnourished? And obviously she didn't know the answer to that. And there is no way to tell just by looking at them. You actually have to feel the crop and you have to look at them uh, underneath the belly. Basically I said, ma'am, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the first thing about ducks. I have about 20 of them at home and they don't eat nothing. Nobody here is feeding any of the ducks in Waco. I'm spending quite a little bit on food for all of these little things just to keep them sustained. And we're rehoming half of these tonight. The issue, especially whenever the winter comes around is that nobody wants to go out in the cold and feed them every day. Now, some people come and they throw bread and that's okay that'll keep them alive but only for about two years when they're supposed to live about seven to uh, ten years also i was literally holding the goose in front of her goose wasn't struggling or making any kind of noises he was just relaxing in my arm but i said okay well we are going to come back whenever i have a camera to film this because it's not worth me giving a sermon to everyone on why you shouldn't let the ducks go abandoned at the park okay i'm at this little park across the street i'm gonna meet with tabby here brought my little cat food just in case we find a little stray cat and we found this adorable little bread now i said it's not good to feed these guys bread but at the end of the day it's good to catch them and that's what we want to do today also here's an emergency contraceptive on the ground everybody i'm here with tabby she's on our board of directors here at the urban restaurant say hello tabby hi like i said we're coming back for the geese particularly they're the first priority what geese will do is that and typically people just dump their male geese here they will mount the females or they'll actually mate up with a little female now this one probably grew up with this little duck and then people probably release both of them here i believe this is a male african goose with a female little some kind of i don't know some kind of farm duck the issue is when they mate it ends up being really detrimental to the female i've actually seen plenty of instances where the male goose in this exact park will be drowning a female while trying to mate with it. Normally I would use a cast net for this, but today, uh, now that I actually live in Waco, I'm gonna just start building their trust. Start by giving them a little bit of bread. All of these guys were raised on a farm at one point. So you can tell these guys are a little bit malnourished too because their crops are really kind of indented. Look at this little guy. I do really wish that I could take both of them. So I'm gonna try my best to grab them both. Okay, you see this? This should not belong in the wild. Animal that will literally come up to you and eat 
out of your hand should not belong in the wild. These have been abandoned here. You can take them and legally, without any permits, and just bring them back home. So this is how you build trust. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and get these guys on the way out because uh, I think that's gonna be a lot easier than keeping them in the bus over there when there's a children's party going on. Because I don't wanna have to give a sermon to all of those people on why you should take the ducks from the park. So I'm actually going to leave them here for now. And then Tabby and I are gonna go over here and see if we can find any other geese in particular. He bit you? Yeah. At that point too, these guys deserve to be on a farm. This guy deserves to be our little pet. The only thing I don't like about this is that I can't get that one at the same time. That one's also clearly a domestic dog. Okay, these little guys are literally following us all the way over here. So what we're gonna, this is Waco by the way, this is downtown. A little bit downstream from where the tortilla tossing bridge is. And like I said, nobody's tossing tortillas anymore. So that's why all these guys are so hungry. I'm going to try my best to catch both of them at the same time. Okay, so we're walking further downstream. I can see they're still actually following. Domestic animal, even a feral one, is following people like this for food. Just goes to show that they're not being fed enough. Geese do eat grass, and there's plenty of grass here. They also need more than just grass. Okay, so our little boy goose, the white boy, he's way over there, and there's a bunch of people over there. Could go over there and grab them. Is he aggressive? I would say he's aggressive. Yeah. Those two were probably raised together. Yeah. They're, uh, they're very attached. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get both at the same time. I really want to keep them together because yeah. they're friends. But at the end of the day, if we can't, I'm going to have to come back with a pass net. <laughs> and he's not aggressive. Fights are like really soft. Oh, that's nice. He's charged this week. And she is a lot more hesitant. And once I grab him, I'm not going to be able to take her. That's the issue. I want to be able to do both. Do you need another set of pants? <laughs> Nope. Yeah. <laughs> here, here, hold this one. Than what I'd like to do with these guys, but that was the only way I'd be able to grab two of them without a net. But um, these guys don't really belong together in like a mating context. These guys belong in a farm where they can get put on the right nutrition. You can feel their crops are very, very small. And if you guys want to feel, if you feel right here, you can feel the bone and you can feel how there's a big deep indent in there. It's supposed to be muscle. It's be actually protruding, and now it's going in. And one woman said to us earlier, well, they don't look like they're starving. And it's like, well, that's the thing. You can't really tell unless you pick them up and feel their chest. They only live about two years tops since they're released here. At the end of the day, these guys are already really calmed down. I was never really screaming, except for whenever I jumped on them. Uh, they're gonna be going back and they're gonna be getting a really good diet. Okay, you got all the windows somewhat closed. Just gonna close this window in the front real quick. Well, that one actually might be a male too. All right, everybody, I'm here with my friends. They are coming back to my home. Healthy food for the water folk. This is the expensive, nice stuff that's really high packed in nutrients specifically for waterfowl. And yes, I got it for them. There we go. Okay, there's my little kitten. I told you guys. I literally told you, we told you. Oh, Morgan. Here's a beautiful young African man for you, Morgan. As you can see, Morgan has already taken and accepted this new goose friend as one of his own. And this is our son, Kyle. Everyone said, oh, I think Uncle Ben swapped out Kevin for Kyle and that's why he's friendly now. No, this is Kyle. And while they are brothers and they have similar markings, if this was Kevin, he wouldn't be sitting here hiding. Tabby, how's about you get in there and squat with, oh, is that a lizard? Is that a, what is that, a snake? Hey, stand under here long enough, might just be able to catch a treat. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it.